Hey, this is Jake from Mito. I'm going to show you how you can really quickly analyze and edit your data using the Mito Sheet Python package. So this is the Mito Sheet right here. This is our spreadsheet interface inside of the Jupyter environment. To call this, all I'm doing is importing the Mito Sheet package and then calling Mito Sheet Sheet. To get data in, I can either pass in a data frame already that I have at any point in my analysis. Just put the data frame in there, and it'll populate the Mito Sheet, or I can import a file using the import modal and we can search our local file system here. In terms of how to install the Mito package, this is our install instructions here. All you need to do is put in these two commands, this one right here, and then this one here, and then just uh, restart your, your browser, your terminal, and you should be good to go. Just open up JupyterLab. So now we're back in JupyterLab. Let's go through some of the functionality you can use in Mito to help you generate Python much more quickly and get your analysis done in a really um, visual and easy to use way. So I have a data set here. The first thing I might want to do is just filter out some data I'm not going to need. So we have these countries here. Let's apply this and I'll click add filter. And then let's say we'll do does not contain Japan. I'm going to take out all the data that doesn't have Japan. So we can see we have we had 2250, now we have 2228. Uh, so we lost a few there just from doing the filter. I've applied my filter. I'll close this. We see Japan is not there anymore in the country column. And when I go down here, we see we've generated the code that takes out all the data without Japan. And to use this code, to use this analysis, all I have to do is code cell here. And now if I print out the uh, the name of the data so using the name of the data frame which is ramen ratings underscore csv oops underscore csv print that out we'll see Japan is not here so these edits by running the cell affect the data moving forward affect the data frame moving forward this is a new feature I wanted to show which is that any data frame we print out we can easily turn into a mito sheet just by clicking this button here so when I print out any data frame at any point in my analysis, all I have to do is click this button here, and it turns that data oops, into a MITRE sheet. So here is a MITRE sheet with the data that we've already filtered down. Other things I can do, I can merge data sets together here using that merge modal. Actually, I only have one data set, so we're not going to merge anything, but I can also do pivot tables as well. Let's do one of those. So we have, we have the different... Um, styles here and let's just do a count of the different styles so here we see we have uh bar bowl box can cup pack and tray and we see we have the style counts for each of those so we know how many we have for each of these styles so this is a pivot table here and again we have generated the code for that pivot table here and if i want to graph this i can definitely do that as well using the graph button so I'll graph this, let's graph the style against the style count. And we get our graph here. We can zoom in on this information if we want to, just look at specific data sets and I can I can zoom back out as well. So this is a really great way to explore your data. Oops, let me pull that over, there we go. This is um, a, uh, a bar chart, but we can also make box plots, histograms, and scatter plots as well. So lots of options for graphing our data. And a nice new feature that Mito has, which is that you know making the making the graphs visually is great, but you're also going to want the code. So writing the code out for your graphs can be pretty time consuming. In Mito, all I have to do is copy this graph code, click that button here. And now if I scroll down to a new cell here, I can paste this and we get the code for that graph. So this is the code it would have taken to write this graph. Uh, but we did it visually using Mito, and then we just copy the code at the end. So we can generate code for our visualizations. Any visualization you make, you can get the equivalent code. I'm going to go back up to our base data set here again. Let's look at some of the summary statistics we can get for columns. So let's go, we'll stick with country here. If I click this tab here, we have three tabs down here. We can filter and sort our data in ascending and descending order. I can also look at the summary statistics. So we'll get a nice chart showing the frequencies of all the different values here and some great summary stats, the count, unique, top frequency, how many NANs we have, which is zero here, which is great. And then this is a new feature here. If I click the values here, we can see all the unique values we have, and we can also search these values, and we see what the frequency of each of those is and the percentage. So we know that China has 169 values, and that's 7.59% of the total values here. So it's a really great way to understand the distribution, 
what are the frequent values, what are the less frequent values, really get a good grasp of your data in terms of exploratory data analysis. So I'm going to add a column here, and let's add this column here, and let's say I want it to be the review number uh, times 20. Oops. We'll do that. Let's see here we get our value here. Now we have the review number times 20. So we can use spreadsheet formulas within the sheet itself to create new columns and edit the data. If you want to see um, the full list of functions we have, here you go. So lots of data cleaning, date manipulation, etc. Filling NANs, you know, filling in zeros for NANs, and filtering out null values is all there as well. Another new feature Mito has, which is really powerful, is that we can actually edit any piece of data. So if I double click on any value, let's say we have this India value here. Let's say we're doing some data validation work and we realize, you know what, we don't want this to be in India. We want this to be oops, oops, missed it twice. Here we go. We've edited the data and here's China. And down here, we'll generate the code for that new column as well as the code for replacing that India value with China. So lots of great new features in Mighty you can use to analyze your data. Just to run them over again, we can add columns, we can delete columns, we can make pivot tables, we can merge data sets together, we can graph, we can save analyses and replay them, which is sort of like a macro, like an automating process. We can also undo and redo steps, which is great. We can clear our analysis back to its base set. If I click this, hit clear, now the data is back in its base form. So Mito is a really great way to generate Python code for your analysis through a visual spreadsheet interface.